After the proto-history of Genesis 1 through 11, we find the history of Abram, who will later become Abraham. Father Abraham had many sons. That one. Abraham's story starts toward the end of chapter 11, where he marries Sarai, and it ends in chapter 25, where he marries Keturah. These two marriages, one at the beginning and one at the end of the story, signal that we may be dealing here with a narrative written in a certain way. In what way? Well, the Hebrew way. The Hebrew way of a chiasm, that is, parallel ideas running on one side and the other, leading up to a focal point where the main idea is expressed. And that's exactly the case here. For instance, on one side of the story, Abram leaves his country and kindred. On the other side, Abraham sends his servant back to his country and kindred. Hagar runs away with Ishmael before the climax, and then they are sent away after the climax. Isaac's birth is promised here, and his actual birth happens over here. So, where is this going? Let me read it for you. Genesis 19, verse 29. And it came to pass, when God destroyed the cities of the plain. This is a section from the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. You know the story, right? So, it came to pass, when God destroyed the cities of the plain, that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow, when he overthrew the cities in which Lot had dwelt. Hmm. God remembered, and the rescue plan was put in place. Have you seen this before? Of course. Where? Genesis 8, verse 1. God remembered whom? Noah. That was the focal point of the chiasm of the flood story. Was there a rescue plan in place? Of course. But wait. I remember something similar in the little chiasm of the rainbow. Read Genesis 9.15 for me, please. And I will remember. Wow. Shalom.